Hi, my name is Kim and I am a digital design specialist at Nagios. For this video, I'll be explaining what a server is. As you watch this video, your device is talking to a server. When you check your email, stream music, or browse social media, you're using servers. But what exactly is a server and why does the entire internet depend on them? A server is simply a computer. But unlike the laptop or phone you're using right now, a server's job is to serve information and services to other computers, which are called clients. Think of it like a restaurant. Your device is the customer placing an order, and the server is the kitchen that prepares and delivers exactly what you requested. This relationship is called the client-server model, and it's the foundation of how the internet works. Physically, servers are built differently than regular computers. They're designed to run 24-7, handle multiple requests, and store massive amounts of data. They typically have more powerful processors, more RAM, redundant power supplies, and specialized cooling systems. Now, why are servers important? Well, it solves three critical problems. First, centralization. Instead of every device storing every piece of information, servers act as a central hub that stores and distributes data efficiently. Second, scalability. A single server can handle requests from thousands or even millions of users, all at the same time. Third, reliability. Servers use redundant systems, backups, and failover mechanisms to ensure your data is always available, even if hardware fails. Without servers, there would be no Google searches, no Netflix streaming, no banking, no social media, and no cloud storage. Every digital service you use depends on servers working behind the scenes. Let's get into the five most common types of servers you might interact with every day. Starting off with number one, web servers. Web servers deliver websites to your browser. When you type a URL, you're asking a web server to send you HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files that create the web page you see. Popular web servers include Nginx, Apache, and Microsoft Internet Information Services, or IIS. Number two, database servers. Database servers store and manage data. Every time you log into an app, post a photo, or make a purchase online, that information is stored in a database server. Examples include MySQL, PostgreSQL, and MongoDB servers. Number three, file servers. File servers store and share files across network. In offices, file servers let employees access shared documents. Cloud services like Google Drive and Dropbox are essentially massive file servers you can access from anywhere. Number four, email servers. Email servers are responsible for sending, receiving, and storing messages. When you send an email, it's routed through servers such as Google's Gmail, Microsoft's Outlook, or Yahoo Mail before reaching its destination. Lastly, number five, application servers. Application servers run software applications and process business logic. When you use a mobile app to check your bank balance or order food, you're communicating with application servers that process your request and return results. Most modern services use multiple types of servers that work together. A simple online shopping experience might involve web servers for the interface, database servers for product information, file servers for images, application servers for processing payments. Remember, servers are specialized computers designed to serve other computers. They provide centralization, scalability, and reliability that make modern internet services possible. And whether it's web servers delivering websites, database servers storing information, or application servers processing requests, they all work together to create the digital experience we rely on today. That's all for this video. If you like this video, check out our YouTube channel for more content. Thanks for watching and keep on monitoring.